AT by Bowers Funeral Home, the County Federal Credit Union, TNT, Northern Maine Community College, Scoville Building Supply, FAP Body, United Insurance, J. McLaughlin Construction, Daigle Oil Company, Priority Auto Sales, Rick Hannigan Plumbing, Cushman & Sons, KVHC, County Ag & Turf, Holton Tire & Steelstone, Maine Equipment, Griffith Ford, Napa & Coastal Auto Parts, Pat's Pizza, Madigan Home Healthcare, Pioneer Times, Pioneer Broadband, Thompson & Hamill, Aroostook Limousines, Huber Engineered Woods, Jeans Electronics, County Physical Therapy, Katahdin Trust Company, White Smiles, Maine Baseball Academy, S.W. Collins, Nortrax, Herring Brothers. Now let's go down to the floor. <laughs> right, welcome back on WHOU to Caribou High School. Steve Carmichael, Bobby Russell, John Humphrey on the camera. Chelsea Gentle, our producer, getting set for game number two of this doubleheader. This time it'll be the boys. Caribou, the number one seed, 6-0 and on the year against Ellsworth, number four, with a record of 4-1. and one. Talk about these two teams real quick, Bobby. Start with Caribou. We said 6-0 and this year on a 22-game win streak. Parker Depray picked up his 1,000th point the other day in the win against MDI, but well, it's not just Parker Depray. They had four guys in double figures. Yeah, they are so balanced. Uh, any one of the starting five can put up double digits on any given night. You know, and the talk does start with Parker Depray. I think he was all tournament team, all main selection last year, and, and uh, certainly the leader of the ball club, but... In the backcourt, they also have Alex Bouchard, who, who was on the ball club last year. We talked about them bringing back four starters, so Sawyer Depre as well. And he's really picked up his offensive punch this year. And uh, When we saw him against MDI, he was really able to get out in the open floor and the recipient of running the floor and some easy buckets in transition. And Isaac Marker is able to fill it up on any given night. He can really stroke the basketball for uh, the Vikings as well. So just such a balanced attack. It's tough to key on one guy, say a Parker Depre. I mean, yeah, you got to slow him down, but there's just so many other weapons out there that uh, they are a nightmare matchup. Speaking of a nightmare matchup, on the other side, number 32, the big fella underneath, Jackson Curtis, uh, the senior, he provides a difficult matchup no matter who he faces, just with his ability to step out beyond the arc, as you saw there, knock down a three, but uh, excellent footwork inside, and of course his younger brother Hunter Curtis, you have Darby Berry and Connor Crawford, Javon James coming off the bench, head coach Peter Austin has himself a very talented ball club. Well, and year in and year out, this is a perennial uh, tournament team for Coach Austin, one of the best coaches in the business, and uh, yeah, certainly Jackson Curtis underneath is going to be a matchup, mismatch, uh, sort of for the Vikings. Who will get the assignment? Usually Sawyer Depre draws the big man of the opposing team. We'll see if he's able to slow him down, but when they kick it out, Darby Berry can really drain the three when he gets going. And Last year, uh, Hunter Curtis, he was really able to get to the basket a lot as well in the slashing type moves. So, uh, one of the games that I think everybody has circled on the calendar when the schedules came out got postponed by a few days, but uh, it's finally here, Stevie, and uh, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, it's it's going to be a contrast in two styles. I can't imagine Ellsworth's going to want to get up and down the floor with Caribou, and Caribou is at their best when they're in the open floor. Yeah, right now, as you, as you mentioned, two top teams in Class B, two of the top four. Uh, Caribou sits number one, then Winslow and Herman, but then Ellsworth only played five games so far, so this would be a heel point worthy win if Ellsworth, any confidence building win as they lost to Washington Academy earlier this season. If they can knock off undefeated Caribou, Build them some yeah. momentum. Well, it's not 22 in a row, but it's four in a row for them as they yeah. uh, dropped their season opener, but have uh, won every game since then. So looking to continue the momentum. Second trip to the county in less than a week for the Eagles. Let's see how they do today. Let's send it down to the floor. Meet the starting lineups brought to you by the County Federal Credit Union.
Those are your starting lineups. Pretty much a packed house on hand, Bobby. It sure is. There's a few stipends being paid today. Oh. Well, the MBI MBI crowd was a good one, too. short of one-liners, are you, Russell? Well, think about it. <laughs> Officials are Mr. Porter and Mr. Day. And they brought out the big guns, Mr. Rodriguez, in the middle. The man in the middle when the action starts. Depre and Hunter Curtis to tip it off at center. No. Tip going to be controlled by Harris as he stole the tip there from Marker. Barry, no hesitation, misses the three. And Holzer will tip the rebound to Isaac Marker, the senior. Here starts three seniors, two juniors. Bouchard, senior captain. Caribou's doing a little feeling out right now, Stevie. Trying to decide exactly what Ellsworth's putting up for defense. Depre catches, misfires. And Jackson Curtis on the weak side will haul in the rebound. Now his younger brother, Hunter. A couple of brother duos. On each ball club, the Depre brothers for Caribou, the Curtis brothers for the Ellsworth Eagles. Hunter Curtis with it, picked up by Ethan Holdsworth. And uh, to no surprise, Sawyer Depre drawing the assignment on Jackson Curtis, but draws a triple team. Fades away. He misfires on the shot. It's up now. Bouchard quickly into the front court, crosses over into the lane. The runner rolls over the front of the rim, and Alex Bouchard strikes first for the Vikings. Well, and that's just the uh, physical growth of all the Vikings that time, Bouchard is just stronger this year and able to take it into the lane to finish. Curtis kicks it out. Barry. Depre closes out on him. Now Barry finds himself open. Back iron no good. Curtis, those big paws, hauls in the offensive rebound but ties up. It's tied up by the Vikings. And the arrow favors Caribou. Well, there was some contact there, but we saw that against MDI. Just minimal contact, doesn't draw the whistle. Very unable to get it to go, but when Jackson Curtis got the ball, he 
Had to bring it down low and the Vikings just swarmed it. Sawyer Depre. Looked it out to Holdsworth. Now Bouchard, they work it around the perimeter. Parker Depre behind the back dribble. To his younger brother Sawyer. At the block, kicks it out to Parker Depre. Right hand dribble, little runner up and in. That's gonna be a tough shot to stop. If he can get that to go all night. Little baby hook shot. Yeah, Parker Depre, 20 points in the victory against MDI, including his 1,000th point. Bouchard knocks it out of play. Seemed like uh, for a while the 1,000th point wasn't gonna happen. Had some yeah. opportunities go halfway down and come out, but able to knock down a free throw to surpass that mark. Depre on Curtis, see Bouchard was on the weak side with some help defense. Crawford off the dribble, and it, back out to Harris. Right now the Vikings very aware of where Jackson Curtis is on the floor. If you're on the weak side, you're helping Sawyer Depre because he's trying to front, you're in behind Jackson Curtis. Head coach Kyle Corgan mentioned, don't want any easy touches for Curtis with deep post position. And you can see the Eagles also real happy just moving the ball around. They know where they want it to go. Jackson Curtis will take our time until we can get it there. Run some clock. Keep it a half court game. They do not want to run with the Vikings. Bouchard in transition. Holdsworth. It might be an offensive foul, and it is. As a great job by Crawford stepping in to take the contact. Whew. That wasn't for the faint of heart. Ethan Holdsworth, full speed ahead, coming at you. You have the courage to step in there and do that, Stevie? Nope. That's why I am perfectly content sitting in the back row of the bleachers with a headset on. Ditto. <laughs> I echo that sentiment. <laughs> Crawford underneath to Curtis. Now the Depre brothers double team him. Marker comes on the triple team. Kick it back out to Crawford. That'll be Austin Harris. You know, yeah, there was Zach Harris. Now there's Austin Harris. Curtis. Barry flashes through the paint. Now double team. Curtis trying to lean in. Depre brothers surround him. They kick it out. Barry for three. And he's got the ability to knock it down from the perimeter, as you see there. Well, there's no question about it. Good find there. He will drain him all night long. Harris reaches in, knocks it away. But everything running through Jackson Curtis, whether he shoots it or not, getting it inside. And you've got to mark up Darby Barry. He'll drain those all night long, and especially in transition. Whoever's assignment that is, you really, you almost can't go to help. Knocked down two in a row, and the Eagles take the two-point lead, six to four. Marker out to Sawyer Depre. Parker Depre behind, between the leg dribble, all the way to the basket. Counted and one. Well, that's the second time he's been able to get himself to the front of the rim. Finishes with the contact. That one on Darby Berry, and you saw the quickness difference, Depre against Curtis. As Depre, he's used to handling the basketball out near the perimeter. Curtis, probably not used to guarding a guy that agile. Well, the ability, yeah, exactly, the ability to put it on the ground and attack the rim. Depre, the second leading scorer in the Big East, just behind Holton's Keegan Gentle. Caribou retakes the lead by one, Crawford. Hunter Curtis out near midcourt. Three and a half to go first quarter. Isolating is Hunter Curtis. Kick out Crawford, right hand dribble into the lane. Now finds Barry, again wide open, this time from mid range. That one halfway down, it popped right back out. And the rebound down to Parker Depre. Bouchard to go to Sawyer Depre, left hand. Hand off to Marker. Bouchard lost the handle. Goes right to Sawyer Depre, misses the land. Holzer tried to tip it up and in, and it's cleared by Barry. Nice job defensively there by the Eagles. Curtis had great position on Parker Depre. They couldn't get him the basketball. Now Hunter Curtis drives baseline, kick out Austin Harris for the triple. He doesn't get the roll. And Marker, head of the field, is Bouchard. He'll catch it. Let Barry fly by and lay it up and in. And that's just how fast the. Vikings can get up and down the floor. Two passes, the layup. It's a quick 30 second timeout for Ellsworth. We'll keep it right here. As 2.43 to go in the first quarter, Caribou leading nine to six. And you mentioned that is the tempo Caribou wants to play at. Ellsworth, we've seen them have 
45 second possessions here a couple times in this first quarter and that's the pace they want to play. Exactly right. And we saw MDI here on, on Saturday do a nice job after they got their feet underneath them of jamming the outlet. And that time there, the outlet was not jammed. They get it out to Depre, about the half court, this little shy half court, and Alex Bushard had leaked free at the other end of the floor. So two passes and they were at their own basket. Parker Depre, the, what is the second leading scorer earlier in the game as Darby Berry has all six for the Ellsworth Eagles. Depre with five on the other side for the Vikings. Hunter Curtis on the right wing, jab steps underneath, finds Barry. Marker knocks it loose, it'll stay with the Eagles. There's a couple substitutions checking in. Number 23, Brett Bragdon, and number three, Javon James in for head coach Austin. Skip pass, Bragdon right off the bench. And misfires there, James climbs the ladder for the rebound and his putback is swatted away by Sawyer Depre. In transition, Parker Depre hands off to Holdsworth underneath. Foul call. And two free throws upcoming for the junior Holdsworth. And there again, you don't convert offensively. They're grabbing the rebound and they're getting up the floor. Good strong push of the basketball. Unselfish, give it up, get it back. Holdsworth at the line, inserted into the starting lineup this year, replacing the graduating Austin Finland. As Holdsworth, 37 goals in his soccer campaign this year, broke the Caribou School record. Actually broke his head coach as Kyle Corgan from 2007, where he had 27 goals. So he didn't just break it, he shattered it. Well, Corgan scored a few against us when I played for Prescott, so. James, Curtis, Right now, Sawyer Depper doing a phenomenal job. Moving his feet, trying to front it at all costs. If, if he gets it, he's doing a great job staying in front of him, not letting Curtis get by him. Bragdon, screen set by Hunter Curtis. Barry, it's 10-6. Caribou with the advantage. A minute and a half to go first quarter. They leave James wide open, daring him to shoot. He obliges and misfires. Well, they weren't going to step out on him and leave Jackson Curtis alone underneath. Good decision there by Sawyer Depre. That pays off. Marker to pull up from 10. Off the mark. Depre couldn't handle the rebound. Bouchard gets back to deflect the pass intended for James. Good hands there by Bouchard. Is, would have been an easy two for... Is it James or Jones? My program says Jones. Mine says James. Hmm. Who knows? You notice another misprint on the, as Hunter Curtis is a sophomore, not a senior, so anyway. That's Curtis. I'll double check with the NPA website in just a second. Marker pulls up, buries a jumper. That's a tough pass in transition too. Pulling up on a dime. Talked about Isaac Marker in the pregame and how he can fill it up. He's had some big quarters and big games. Jumper in the lane, a foul call. It'll be Hunter Curtis. And the officials are going to get worked over in good shape here today. Is, uh, that was no different than a foul that happened on the other end of the floor. Coach Corrigan questioning whether that one was a foul or not, but it's the exact same call that happened down here to our left. So the NPA website says Javon James. So I'm going to cross this out and go with James. As Curtis. I don't know why you doubt me, Bobby, sometimes, but well, I just wanted a clarification of the facts. That's all I was asking well, for. Okay. Ethan Oldsworth picks up foul number two there. Also confirmed by our own Ryan Lincoln. It is James. He just got the rebound off the free throw miss. He's going to be called for the offensive foul here. Thirty-five seconds to play in the first quarter. Another substitution for Ellsworth. Andrew right out. Quick score update 
from Prescal. The Trojans running away from the Wildcats, 71 to 48. In the fourth quarter there, just underway. MDI on pace for almost 100 points. Parker Depre drives baseline. Able to lay it up and in, a nifty move from the senior. Well, it looked like he was gonna be in trouble in behind the backboard, but the length of Parker Depre, a pretty little reversal. Lobbing it underneath for Curtis. Uses his strength to get it up there, but he couldn't finish, and that will do it for the first quarter of play. Caribou leading it 14 to seven. We're back in 60 seconds for the second quarter on WHOU. The SW Collins Company is the only Makita Pro Center in Maine, which means we have access to all the latest tools that Makita has to offer. Our factory trained employees are ready to make sure that you have the right tool for any project. With over 180 tools, Makita has the largest cordless offering with a single battery platform in the industry. And don't forget, we are also a Makita authorized service dealer. For sales, service, and the largest selection of quality Makita tools, go where the builders go. The SW Collins Company. It's never too early to start planning for your future, whether that means protecting your family with life insurance, college planning, or starting to save for retirement. I want to help you get started. Regardless of your age, it's important to start planning for your financial future now. And as you inch closer to retirement, it's important for you to protect your assets, your retirement income, and your family. Thompson Hamill has many tools available to help you chart your course on your financial roadmap. Thompson Hamill, LLC. Your family, your future. Underneath, they get it to Jackson Curtis. Backing down on Sawyer Depre. And the foul is going to be called on the junior. It might even potentially be on yeah, Jake Burkowski reaching oh. in. That's one of those plays we were talking about, Stevie, uh, the other day at dinner. Lunch, I should say. A little back down, a little the offensive player creating a little contact there. He able to get himself a little closer to the basket. So you, you thought a player posting up dislodges the defender's space and it's an offensive foul, although I don't mind a good back to the basket game. And Jackson Curtis it's, happens, it's a lost start, that's for yep. sure. And Jackson Curtis just happens to be, well, a little more physical than most players. And I think he should be rewarded for. Well, I, I think he uh, enjoys creating that contact. Yep. It's to his advantage. And he does it very well. He does. And to this point, he caught one at the end of the first quarter. But that was the, those are the two closest times he's caught the ball to the basket. I think we're going to have a five-second violation here. We get a turnover back to Caribou. Austin Harris checks back in, as does Hunter Curtis. In number 11, Austin Harris. I'm just not a fan of the shack move when you start 15 feet away from the basket and wind up underneath the basket. That, to me, is an offensive foul. Now, I could be wrong. We're going to get a carry violation on Michael Brigman. Back to the Eagles. We had a very, very spirited debate at Pat's Pizza earlier this week. One of our fine sponsors. Yeah. You even got the video clips out to show me. <laughs> Six point lead for the Vikings. Underneath, Curtis got Bouchard and Depre on him. Now Hunter Curtis inside the lane. Adjusts, tries to lob it to Jackson underneath, but passes a bit off target. Yeah, I like how the big fella gave it up, and he wanted it right back. Got to give it to him immediately. A little too late in the delivery. Well, he was looking at Hunter as he thought he was going to launch up a jumper from mid-range. Depre off the dribble. He tried to hand it off to Brigman. Now it's loose to the basket. Right out for two. That's a nice job by right out using the left hand, using the body to shield the ball from Depre. Brigman to Burkowski. Back out to Bouchard. Left hand dribble fades away. No. Rebound tipped up there by Depre. He misses. Now Bouchard on the third opportunity can't get it to fall. And the board cleared by the Eagles. That'd be Javon James. Depre deflects the post entry pass. Six twenty to go, second quarter. Depre anticipates the pass to the basket. He'll light up an end. Well, that time, 
Right out in win the foot race is Depre out in the open floor. He's up to nine points. Lead back up to six for Caribou. As Darby Berry gets set to check in, right out on the crossover dribble. Brigman on him. Now Curtis, inside out dribble. Caribou fans looking for a carry. <laughs> Harris, gonna be called for the offensive foul as he extended that right forearm to create some space away from Jake Prokoski. Oh, well, we had a great angle on it. Prokoski moving his feet, staying in front. Darby Berry will check back in. Prokoski. So your Depre off the dribble, the finger roll spins it home. Well, they're going with uh, five out around the perimeter, looking to attack, and Depre. Beautiful move. 18 to 10, your score. Depre deflects the pass intended for Barry. A few patrons in the front row I thought might have, uh, can have your head on a swivel. Yeah, I thought Depre might have launched himself into him. They would not have been ready for it. <laughs> Barry, back iron, and in transition, Depre lobs it to his older brother. Tough catch by Parker, saved it but right to Jackson Curtis. Now Ellsworth in transition, right out. A little floater. Board down to Sawyer Depre. This is another thing that makes the Vikings so versatile. Any one of them can handle the ball. It looked like he was gonna outlet it. He sees a lane right straight up the middle of the floor and just attacks the front of the rim. Sawyer Depre got fouled. He went right down the center of the lane. Five team fouls on Ellsworth, three called on Caribou. Just under five minutes to play in the second quarter. Sawyer Depre misses the first. Hunter Crawford checks back in for right out. Mark. And they'll wait for Marker to check in for Brigman. Sawyer Depre has three in a row for the Vikings, and the lead is up to nine. Crawford picked up by Marker. Now Hunter Curtis spins high off the window, able to get it to fall. Tough move by the sophomore. Well, it sure was. Bushard did a great job moving his feet, but that was no contest. And great job split the double team when Burkowski came over. Sawyer Depre says thank you very much. This is a fortuitous bounce. Able to lay it up and in. Well, it was. It was Brother Parker up contesting the rebound and able to free it up right to him. Austin Harris, guarded by Burkowski. Post-entry pass. Tough angle there. Yeah, it sure was. Coming from the top, trying to get it to the post. Couldn't get his hands on it. Burkowski pulls up from 10. Off the mark. And Jackson Curtis with another rebound. Pulls up for three. Misfires. Vikings in the half court, really looking to try to exploit a matchup they like. They leave Sawyer and Depre wide open and he buries the triple. Well, he's taking it to the basket. You gotta respect that. And they back off him and he drains the three ball. That's eight in a row for Sawyer Depre and the lead is up to 12. And a full timeout called by Ellsworth. We'll step aside also. 3.39 to go in the second. 12 point lead for the Vikings back in 60 seconds on WHOU. Tired of the same old boring meals? Try something new this week. TNT Takeout at 69 High Street in Holton has what you're looking for. And believe me, the name doesn't lie. The food is dynamite. Every pizza is loaded with lots of gooey cheese and delicious toppings from traditional pepperoni to barbecue chicken combination to vegetarian pizza or all meat. You can grab their specials or enjoy salads to food off the grill, Mexican seafood and hot or cold subs. TNT Takeout, the convenience store that has it all. Call 521-5250. 
from kitchen accidents to building damage, owning your own restaurant comes with a lot of liabilities. Among drivers, vehicles, and business property, there's a lot of exposure. If our equipment fails, we know United Insurance has us covered. For us, finding the right words for marketing campaigns is simple. Finding the right insurance is not. That's why it's nice to know United Insurance has us covered. United Insurance has us covered. United Insurance has us covered. The United Insurance has us covered. United, United Insurance, Insurance has, has us covered. covered. Barry has it knocked away by Parker Depre, recovered by Austin Harris. Now Javon James, back to Harris, 16-footer, high arcing jumper, gets the friendly roll. Austin Harris. Well, that ends a bit of a drought for the Eagles. And right back at you. It doesn't take long for the Vikings to get up the floor. They use the outlet pass as well as any ball club I have seen in a long time. And fill in the lanes. This time it's Marker, the recipient. You cannot turn your head to the basketball, and you have to d jam the outlet pass to slow down the Vikings. Otherwise, they're coming at you. Marker misses the free throw. James will haul in the rebound. Harris attacks the rim with some English. <laughs> Was that ever a tough shot? Taking it right at the Vikings. Depre, kick it out, Marker, no hesitation there, knocks down the three, and he'll get one more at the line. Who do you pick to stop, Stevie? You can't pick one, you gotta stop them all, there's just too many weapons. It was Sawyer Depre, he rattled off eight in a row. Marker, Parker Depre, stepping up. Parker Depre had seven in the first quarter, Sawyer Depre scored eight, eight in a row, and now Marker's got five in a row. So he, okay, so he knocked down the three, and now it's going to be one and one. So the basket counts. So he came down, he, he landed on the floor. He's no longer a shooter. Then the foul happened in the box out, which means it's, a, it's not a shooting foul anymore once he comes back to the floor. So they go to the board. Gets a couple free throws. If it hadn't been seven, it would have been out of bounds. Marker misses the free throw. Sawyer Depre. Gets the offensive board. Feed the hot hand. Sawyer Depre. Isaac Marker. Let it fly, young fella. Two and a half to go. Second quarter. Depre, hard attack of the rim. Marker has the rebound. And he's going to get called for the travel. Yeah, he, and Sawyer Depre got hammered as he went up. Marker does a nice job putting... His hand down to keep his balance, but shuffles his feet as he starts to dribble. The Mar hand down, there was nothing wrong with that. It was moving the feet. Bragdon back in. Curtis swings it to Harris, wide open for three, in and out. And the board down to Sawyer Depre. And you can see when the ball goes inside to Curtis, they are bringing the entire roster at him, making him kick it out. Let somebody else beat you. Isaac Marker backing down, fades away, too strong. Burkowski pokes it free. He's one on one with Harris. Burkowski to the basket, no good. Depre right there for the foul. Well, take a look. Burkowski goes in, doesn't finish, but there's three Vikings, no Eagles in sight to follow it up. Harris, Depre fighting hard with. Here front and Curtis now, a strategy you haven't seen a lot of teams employ against him. Well, a lot of teams aren't the Vikings. Bouchard from the wing for three. They're heating up, Stevie. 34 to 16, a timeout called by Ellsworth. That's a full one. We'll take it with him. Minute 17 to go in the second quarter. Caribou has extended the lead to 18. Back in 60 seconds on WHOU. White Smiles Family Dentistry realizes that life gets busy. We have locations in Presque Isle and Fort Fairfield to better accommodate your busy schedule. If you need to see a dentist but don't want to wait months for an appointment, then call White Smiles Family Dentistry. We are always accepting new patients and can accommodate you as quickly as possible. We offer the area's most complete dentistry, including implants, extractions, root canals, and implant-retained dentures, which saves you from trips downstate or transfers to another dental office. 
Don't wait months to see your dentist. Call White Smiles Family Dentistry today. For drivers from Patton to Bangor and everywhere in between, buying from Thornton Brothers is a rewarding experience. If you're looking for a new Ram pickup, Thornton Brothers is definitely the dealership you want to visit. Enjoy Employee Pricing Plus on select new 2019 and 2020 Ram trucks at the Big Finish event at Thornton Brothers. Thornton Brothers in Lincoln, your hometown dealer, wherever your hometown may be. An 18 point advantage for the Vikings. Well, it's a look that they're capable of. We just don't see it a whole lot. Burkowski, three on two. Burkowski to Bouchard, fakes the three. A little runner got hit in the face. They let him play. And the deflection, they're gonna say it's going to be Caribou basketball. Well, it looked like he wanted to dish it off to Sawyer Depre in the middle of the shot. He decides to shoot it. I think it's gonna go back to Ellsworth. I don't think anybody touched the ball on the shot. So the referees come together and determine it will be Ellsworth basketball. And I like the press out of the timeout. Just a quick glimpse of it. Then come back and play your half court man. Don't show it off all at once. James. It'll be Bragdon. And you can, you can see Jake Burkowski, his man is, is Harris. But when the ball's on this side of the floor, he's in the paint. That time, good ball movement by Ellsworth. He's not able to get out, and Harris knocks one down. No, no lack of offense from Austin Harris. He's got six all in the quarter. It's 34-18 now. Quick score update. MDI has defeated Prescal 92-60. We've only got about 15 seconds left here. Certainly... You see now the Vikes probably going to pull it out and hold for one. James. James a little aggressive there. Parker Depper going to be careful. Five second call. Pass intended for Bouchard. It's a bit offline and Ellsworth will get a final look here. Well there wasn't anybody within 15 feet of him. Just threw it wide. With only four seconds left. They're going to put a little token pressure on him. Make him pick it up early. Curtis will have it. Two seconds into the front court. Pull up and come up just a bit short. And that will do it for the first half. The Vikings lead it 34 to 18. An impressive first half there, Bobby, for the Vikings. Well, it was. And you might say they got out of the gates a little slow, putting up 14 points in the first quarter, but put up 20 in that second. And really, it was a show. It wasn't just one player. It was all kinds. You mentioned in the first quarter, it was Parker Depre. Sawyer Depre rattles off eight. Then... Isaac Marker picks up, then Alex Bouchard knocks down a three. We talked about the weapons and they're clicking on all cylinders right now. We will take a three minute break. We come back, we'll have our Katahdin Trust Company halftime show. The score at the half, 34-18, Caribou leads. Back in three minutes on WHOU. We all know a Roostick County winner isn't much fun, but it can be with the right equipment. Holden Tire Company at 76 Myrna Street is your boss plow dealer and carries the King of Snow Aaron Snowblowers. Full service department with parts in stock. Steelstone Industries in Holton is your location for gravel, salt, sand, paving, and plowing. Groundwork materials of all kinds and equipment to move it. We now offer heavy equipment and truck repair at our shop on 289 Station Road in New Limerick. Call Steelstone Industries at 532-2675. At the Maine Baseball Academy, our top priority is to create an experience of advanced learning and skill development for all ages. The YMCA Indoor Turf Facility has many resources that we use to our advantage while developing young athletes. Our top-tier coaching staff includes Director of Operations Ryan Lincoln and John Fry, Searsport District High School, Cody Collins, Bangor Christian Schools, and Cam Archer, Old Town High School. Follow us on Facebook at Maine Baseball Academy or call today for more information. This is Neil, could I help you? You're aware? I'll be right there. What'd you guys do? Gibbons steals! Yeah. That's all you did? Yeah. Yes! There's nothing wrong with that. I guess there is something wrong with giving away steals. Still, this 2016 CRV SC, now only $17,995. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. They were good steals.
Lincoln Power Sports is the leading ATV, snowmobile parts, accessories, and outdoor equipment dealer in Lincoln. Whether you're looking for the latest new products from BRP, Can-Am, Skidoo, or today's best clothing and accessories, we've got it. It's no wonder riders and customers trust Lincoln Power Sports for ATV and snowmobile service and installation of parts and accessories. Stop by our store or browse our extensive online catalog from anywhere in the world. Call 207-794-8100. We would love to hear from from you. MMG Insurance is a proud sponsor of high school basketball. Founded in 1897 and based in Presque Isle, MMG has independent insurance agents across Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. MMG has recently received a national award in innovation, was recognized as the Maine Company of the Year by the Maine Insurance Agents Association, and again named among the best places to work in Maine. Find out more about MMG by visiting our website, mmgins.com. MMG Insurance, protecting your piece of the world. The County.me, your source for countywide sports, including scores and highlights from the greater Holton, Presque Isle, and Caribou regions. We also are the source for all the latest daily news and community happenings for readers of the Holton Pioneer Times, the Star Herald, and the Aroostook Republican and News coverage area. Visit us now on the web at thecounty.me. <laughs> Back on WHOU at Prescott, or Prescott High School, Caribou High School. 34 to 18 is the lead for Caribou at the end of the first half, getting set for our Catan Trust Company halftime show. Some first half numbers for you. Start with the Ellsworth Eagles. They are led by Darby Berry and Austin Harris with six apiece. Hunter Curtis with three. Andrew Wrightout with two. Jackson Curtis with no field goals in that first half, just the one free throw so far for Ellsworth. And then on Caribou side, led by Parker Depre with 11, Alex Bouchard and Isaac Marker with seven, Sawyer Depre with eight, and Ethan Holsworth with one. So, you know, we talked about Caribou when they played MDI. They had four guys in double figures. And, well, tonight it looks like they're headed right back there as those four players with Bouchard, the two Depres, and Marker. Not a lot of teams can throw out four guys that can score 20 plus at any given time and really that play I mean but now those are three seniors but that plays the advantage for Caribou well it it does and you look at what Caribou's doing defensively against Jackson Curtis he averages 22 points a game and they've held him to one one point no field goals every time he touches it they're double triple team and making him kick it out let somebody else beat you and you know they are athletic enough to be able to do that and you're right. Not every team is careful, offensively or defensively. And right now, they are clicking on all cylinders and uh, just impressive to watch. Both ends of the floor. Because so, Jackson Curtis is a tre tremendous basketball player. And, uh, you know, I want to give him credit, too, cause, because he is drawing so much attention. He has been very unselfish, especially in, in Austin Harris and Darby Barry. Barry started the game off with two straight threes to give Ellsworth their uh, lead by two, then Harris provided some offense, but he is kicking the ball out to try to you know, give give a lot of his teammates, and they have gotten open shots. Well, that's the ultimate tip of the cap. Yeah. The Caribou Vikings are tipping their cap to Jackson Curtis yeah. saying, you are not going to beat us. We know what you're capable of. We're going to try to make somebody else on the Ellsworth team beat us. And, you know, Barry started out with a couple threes. We haven't heard from him since, and he's certainly capable of filling it up. And you mentioned Harris had a couple where he knocked him knocked down as well. But uh, just defensively, the Vikings have taken Ellsworth out of anything they want to do in this first half. Yeah, Giving up 18 points to, to Ellsworth. I mean, that yeah. is phenomenal. So these two teams sitting in the top four in Class B, we expect them to be uh, two contenders come February. And... You know, Caribou, I've talked to a lot of a lot of people within the basketball circus. A lot of people smarter than I am when it comes to basketball and main high school basketball. A lot of people have said Caribou. That's not a big population. That's, well, a lot, Caribou, a lot of people say are head and shoulders above everybody else. That's, well, what, that's what a few coaches have told me. But I think Ellsworth, you know, with, with Curtis, with a weapon like Curtis and some weapons around him, I was thinking, I mean, you can't forget about Herman. Winslow, who, who beat Herman, 
Well, you haven't seen what Washington Academy can do. I think Class B is not, you know, it's caribou and everybody else. I think there are some teams that can well, definitely challenge There certainly them. are teams on a given night. Uh, night in, night out. Caribou <laughs> is certainly the team that is going to have to be beat. You're going to have to go through them in order to win the Northern B Championship uh, this year. Uh, certainly, you know, we talk about all the players that can put it in double digits, but they also get it done on the defensive end of the floor. And uh, you can't turn your back on them, whether they, whether it's a made shot or a defensive rebound for them. They're coming back at you, and just fast. They play well together, uh, know where each other are on the floor, and uh, yeah, there's no question. It goes through Caribou yeah. to win the Northern B title. Another team I didn't mention, MCI. Uh, kind of a question mark up here in the area because they don't travel up here this year. Yeah. So we don't get to see him or won't get to see him until the tournament time. We can see some common opponents but and whatnot. They, but so you talk, so Winslow beats Herman. MCI beats Winslow 71-45. Owen Williams drops 37 points. They played Caribou last year. We don't get to see him this year, but you never know what MCI uh, will throw yeah. out there, and, and clearly they have some talent. You know, so. it, it, no question about it. And it, The other thing is we've yet to see Caribou get in foul trouble. I, my understanding is in the first game of the year down in Orno, they got in foul trouble, and that was a close game. Yeah. Uh, if a team can get Caribou in foul trouble and get some of those weapons on the bench, then you give yourself a little right. better option as well. Right. It's all about, yeah, that, that first half, as you saw Caribou's ability, how quickly they can fill it up. and say so Looking forward to, uh, to a good second half here. We'll see what else, what do you think they have to do in the second half? I say you can do what you can to try to stop Caribou, but well, you're not you know, going to get them all back in, yeah. in one or two possessions. So you get, you, they've got to grind it out. They've got to slow Caribou down. Keep them from getting out in the open floor uh, and somehow try to figure out a way to either free Jackson Curtis up, whether you run him off some screens. Maybe he just doesn't post up. Maybe you run him off some screens. Send him to the high post, screen up for him, free him up somehow. And or some of these other kids, Harris, uh, Darby Berry, they've got to really light it up here in the yeah. second half. Getting set then as Parker Depre is the leading scorer in the game with 11 points. Younger brother Sawyer with eight, and uh, Darby Berry and Austin Harris leading the Ellsworth Eagles with six points apiece. The Ellsworth girls picked up a hard-fought victory over Caribou, 41-37. As Trinity Montigny, she also struggled, but knocked down some free throws at the end of the game to ice it for head coach Andy Pooler. As Caribou will begin the third quarter with the basketball, it'll be Alex Bouchard, Parker Sawyer, Depre, Isaac Marker, and Ethan Holdsworth. Ellsworth with both Curtis brothers, Crawford, Harris, and Barry. As Depre off a screen flashes to the near block, and he'll lay it up and in. And it looked like that pass has even got a piece of it. The defender at his back to the ball, and Depre able to catch it and lay it in. Hunter Curtis fades away, puts it in. That's a tough shot there. Bushard again doing a nice job keeping his feet moving, staying in front. And Hunter Curtis with a fadeaway. Bouchard, tough shot in the lane. Well, for as tough as the one Curtis made, that was as, almost as equally as tough. All contorted in the air. Tried to hand it off to Harris. Bobbled it, but fortunately for Ellsworth, able to retain possession. Ended into the third quarter. It's an 18 point advantage for Caribou. Car Curtis. Crawford, quick swing of the ball to Austin Harris. Let's it fly. Misses. Yeah, I agree with you, Stevie. Looked like he got hit on the release. Closing out. No whistle. Bouchard spins in the lane. Another tough shot. That one well off the mark that time. As Bouchard taps his chest, is my fault. They lob it underneath to Jackson Curtis. Finally gets some space. Misses the bunny. And the rebound down to Parker Depper. Right. That sums up the first half in a few minutes of the second quarter. Catches it in deep. The big fella can't finish. Parker Depre slips and falls to the ground. Scooped up by Bouchard. <laughs> Looks like younger brother Sawyer gets a little chuckle out of that. Sawyer Depre called for the travel. As Caribou is looking for a foul on the post entry pass. I wasn't looking at Sawyer, but was he laughing? <laughs> he had a grin on his face. 
<laughs> Take it at the expense of older brother Parker has a, a bit of a laugh. Jackson Curtis with it. And gonna get a foul call on, it looks like Austin Harris. And we went to set the screen for Jackson Curtis on Sawyer Depre, and they're gonna say he's moving a little bit. Official explains it to the young man. Reports the foul, Coach Austin shakes his head no. I think all is right in basketball world. Coach disagrees. <laughs> well, yeah, that's basically how it goes. Coach, players disagree, but the ref makes the call. Well, it's going to stick. You don't see a lot of changed calls. Uh, Other than out of bounds. bounds. <laughs> out of bounds, maybe. You don't, on, on whistles for fouls, you don't see many. Oh, Tom Mar Marcus, Loader. Marcus fouled there by Crawford. the second on Crawford. <laughs> Makes them both. Nine points in the game for Marker. Entry pass to Jackson Curtis. Quadruple teamed underneath. Finds Austin Harris and he's fouled. You're gonna get Ethan Holsworth. The up fake. Gets him airborne. That'll be his third foul. Here we go. Foul goes on Ethan Holsworth as Harris makes the first. Burkowski checks in for Holdsworth. Makes them both. Eight points in the game for Austin Harris. Five and a half to go third quarter. Still an 18 point lead for the Vikings. Parker Depre across the arc will give off to Alex Bouchard. Back out to Sawyer Depre. Trying to get around Jackson Curtis. Back to Parker. He'll lay it up and in. Well, you can't take your eye off your man. And that time, I believe it was Hunter Curtis watching the ball being driven in by Sir Depre. And Parker smartly goes back door. Lob pass intended for Curtis. Depre on the weak side. Takes away the basketball. Now Sawyer Depre the other way. Can't spin it home. Trying to put back. Doesn't go either. Now Parker Depre with a rebound. Kicks it out. Burkowski. Marker for three. Knocks it down. Well, they couldn't make it. From right under the basket, kick it out for the 20-footer. Isaac Marker drains it. 30-second timeout for head coach Austin. We'll take it also. It's up to a 23-point lead for the Vikings. Back in 30 seconds on WHOU. Aroostook Limousines and Ace Rent-A-Car get you there in style. Aroostook Limousines has 8 and 12 passenger limousines and a 20 passenger party bus for evenings out, proms, weddings, birthdays, concerts, whatever the celebration. Travel anywhere in state and Ace Rent-A-Car specializes in insurance rentals and has locations in Presque Isle, Holton and Patton at Savage Paint and Body. Ace offers everything from compact cars to vans. Ace Rent-A-Car we do it right and we make it easy. Reach both businesses at 768-7368. 45-22. The Vikings with a substantial lead over the Ellsworth Eagles. They've extended it here in this third quarter. Right out. Now here's a steal. Parker Depre. To the basket. Nice job by James to meet him up high. But the foul is going to go on Javon James. Couple athletes getting after it there, Stevie. I think Javon I think James. He's talking to uh, Depre at the free throw line there a little. I think he's telling him all ball. <laughs> Depre had a little smile as Parker Depre makes the first. It was impressive timing, that's for it sure. Was. 
meet him up top like that. Depray makes them both. Now it's Curtis right around Bouchard. Javon James got up so high. I think he knocked it off the cylinder. Yeah, they're going to call uh, basket interference, offensive basket interference. You don't see that around these parts. No, you don't. <laughs> Burkowski. Now Bouchard kick out marker, takes the three, steps in for a mid-range jumper. On the weak side, the board corralled by Harris. It doesn't go down for him, but love the up fake. Saw the defender coming at him. Give him the flyby. James, down low to Curtis on Sawyer Depre. Curtis triple teamed and they get a foul call. I don't know who it's going to go on. If it's Sawyer Depre or maybe 24 marker? Certainly some contact in there. I know the caribou bench didn't really care for the call, but no question. How about the traffic he draws? <laughs> he draws a lot of defensive Unbelievable. attention. Unbelievable. Makes one of two. Now Parker Depre races into the front court. It's 47-23. They leave Sawyer Depre wide open. Makes a pay with another three. Well, he nailed one in the first half. We got to get out. We talked about the evolution of his offensive abilities here. He's really always had that ability, but just stepping it up this year, contributing more on the offensive end. Hunter Curtis lobs it to Jackson Curtis underneath. That's the first field goal for Jackson Curtis. He's got the six points. Well, and it was a lot of it had to do with Sawyer Depre gambling out here for the pass, and once he didn't get it. Able to throw it over the top to Jackson Curtis. Brokowski over to Marker. Marker drives baseline, got caught as the help defense came from Harris, and then a travel called on James. Three oh six to play, third quarter. Caribou up by twenty five. Throw it off the leg of Curtis. Stay with Caribou. Depre underneath. Puts it up off the window. So he triggered the inbound and just stepped in with a hard post to get it right back to him. Curtis to Harris. Hunter Curtis drives baseline, up to Harris, 16-footer. Can't get it to go. Now in transition, lob pass to Marker. He'll catch it and put it up and in. That's a tough shot, right out was in position. This Marker, a little bit taller, able to go up over the top. Jackson Curtis for three, back iron. Burkowski. To Parker Depre at the elbow, hands off to Marker. Trying to find a seam in that Ellsworth defense. 54 25. Parker Depre fades away, knocks it down. Tough shot, got a little bit off balance as he goes up on the baseline. 21 in the game for Parker Depre. Everything going the Vikings' way right now, Stevie. Giving up seven points. Six minutes here have gone by in the second, third quarter. Jackson Curtis from way downtown. He's tried a couple of those. Vikings doing such a good job inside on him. The way he's getting some shot attempts is from deep. Bouchard. Too strong off the glass. Curtis up ahead of the field. They'll get it to right out. He'll spin it in. That's a beautiful outlet pass. Length of the floor. Right on the money.
Bouchard, backdoor feed. Parker Depre gets hit by Curtis. Well, the Vikings, they run that curl off the weak side. A lot of times it is for Parker Depre. Able to connect. Curtis just a little late rotating. It's the first foul on Curtis. Next game for the Central Roostic stream on WHOU. We'll be right back here in Caribou on Saturday. We'll have Washington Academy as the Raiders take the long trip north to take on the Vikings. Really interested to see those Raiders, Bobby. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they kind of open our eyes. Again, a team we don't see a whole lot yep. uh, in the course of the regular season as they only play one game with either Caribou or Presque Isle, and, and it's only one game that's home. But when they beat Ellsworth opening night, as Harris got fouled on his attack of the basket. Yeah, Jax Lynn. Very athletic point guard. Yeah, I understand they have a very nice backcourt as well as a 6'3", 6'4", player that can step away from the basket and knock down the 15-footer. I think it's... Uh, Andon Wood is another backcourt mate. I see yep. he in the Big East statistics, and uh, I believe Cecil Gray is Jake Leitner. Daniel Huang, another familiar name for the Raiders. His head coach Dean Preston coaching both ball clubs. That's quite a undertaking he's got going on. There's a nice article in the Bangor Daily about that, yep. where uh, you know his employers are working with him as well to make sure it happens. And certainly uh, the girls program getting uh, turned around, headed in the right direction. That time a nice set play there, getting the ball back inside to Curtis. We spent a lot of time in Caribou over the next week. Imagine yeah. that. Here on Saturday. We're also here next Tuesday and Wednesday for the Prescott Caribou games. As Curtis makes the first. It's a short drive for you, Bobby. Oh, it's no different than your drive. Yeah, I think yours is a little shorter. Yeah, it could be. It's about 20 minutes to get here. Do it five days a week anyway. So. <laughs> That's right. Oldsworth, as Curtis made both free throws. Caribou right now might be content to try and take the final shot here. As I say that, Burkowski will let it fly. Back iron, no good. Bragdon. James off the dribble. Gets hit by Parker Depre. Good hard attack of the rim there by James. Depre on his hip the whole time. James misses the first. This is them both. Parker Depre will haul in the board. See if he can get one shot off. He does. Doesn't go, and that'll do it for three quarters of play. It's 57 to 29. Caribou with the advantage. Back in 60 seconds for the final quarter after this on WHOU. Hello, this is Tony Bowers at Bowers Funeral, and we want to wish good luck to all area basketball teams, boys and girls, as you strive for the gold ball at the end of the season. We are proud to be a part of your communities and our family serving your family since 1900. Good luck, play hard, and above all, be good sportsmen. Be good for Nana, okay? <laughs> A moment like this is decades in the making. The County Federal Credit Union.
partnering with you to achieve financial success so you can enjoy the moments that matter. CountyFCU.org. 57-29, Caribou leading Ellsworth at the end of three quarters. Barry, both Curtis brothers, right out. And McDonald out there for Ellsworth as off the mark on that three-point attempt was Jackson Curtis. Now Sawyer Depre attacks baseline. Work it around. Bouchard, two points. Sawyer Depre counted and one. How about the vision? Unselfishness. Yeah. And that's the thing with Caribou. I think a lot of people also like, like to talk about is all of them are pretty unselfish. Did not have to give that up, but knew Depre was coming in from the corner. He just got the ball from Depre. Gives it back. Three players in double figures for the Vikings. You notice anything about that free throw? No dribble. Catch it. We're right into rhythm. I like that. Both, That'd be my form. Both Marker and Sawyer Depre with 14 points. Parker Depre leading scorer for them with 23. He has the ball now to Bouchard. He's got nine points. Is, is there such thing as a quiet 23? Oh, yeah. Because, you know, everybody's got in the action. You don't realize he's got 23 points. Barry, haven't heard from him since, since the, the first, first quarter. quarter. Yeah, Knocks down the triple there. He's got nine. He started the game off with two threes, two straight back ones. Back to back. 60-32 is your score. Just a minute into this final quarter. Parker Depre isolates on Barry. You're just going to try to maybe spread the floor and attack one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, Bouchard out near midcourt. Depre's on the baseline. Now it's Sawyer Depre attacking the rim. Just couldn't finish. Bragdon, a tough look a there. Crowd of Vikings around him there. Marker. Curtis back the other way. McDonald off the bounce. Got bumped by Depre. Hey, caught him with the hip again. No question. He had a good angle on it right here. Yep. It's the second. Team's sixth of the second half. Hunter Curtis shovels it over to Bragdon. Just couldn't finish. Gets his own miss. Kick out to Jackson Curtis for three, and he knocks it down. Well, and what's that for uh, the game for him, Stevie? He's got nine. Nine, but you know, they've done a tremendous job limiting his touches inside. And Certainly the key to holding Ellsworth down to 35 points. Well under his average at 22. Put the basketball here. Tough fall away, Jay. You can see, you know, certainly they've got a cushion, but the Vikings aren't getting up on him as tough and tight as they were in the first three quarters. As Coach Austin's going to empty the bench. As Sawyer Depre. Here's another three is, has a smile at the Caribou bench. Well, as well he should. Three big ones from behind the arc, but more importantly, the defensive effort and uh, performance he had today on Jackson Curtis. Sorry, Depre has it here. Couldn't save it. <laughs> the only thing he hasn't done, I don't think, is sell popcorn. <laughs> Thirty-point lead for Caribou. Four and a half to play in the fourth quarter. Hunter Curtis can't get that one to go, and the rebound down to Parker Depre. Bouchard, as now head coach Kyle Corgan will get some of his subs into the game, along with Austin. The Vikings are going to get a nice round of applause from their faithful here in the nation. 
Well deserved. What a performance. Would not have, uh, you know, they, they beat MDI the other day, but they played at a whole nother level today. The timeout was called. We'll keep it right here. 421 to go in the fourth quarter. 65 to 35. Trying to get everybody's name here that checked in for Ellsworth. Number 12, 12, Adam Inman. Yeah, number five, Nick Kane. Number 33, Colby Hardy. 23, Brett Bragdon was another player. And 22, Michael Palmer are all in for Ellsworth. Herbert, Brigman, Espling, Medore, and Bouchard are in for the Vikings. So see some of the players near the end of the bench for both ball clubs. We've got a chance to get some playing time. Medore to the basket. Good strong take there by Zach Medore. All uh, well, four juniors and one sophomore. A, uh, one sophomore for the Vikings out there. Foul goes on Brett Bragdon. We were going through the Big East statistics before the game, and I said I was going to put the stat sheet away, but uh, Zach Medore was 14 for 16 coming in today from the free throw line. Knocked down the first one. And well, sorry, I don't know why sorry, Zach. Talking. Sorry, Zach. Well, his father's right next to you. Yeah, I know. to him. <laughs> Bragdon. Now Kane in the corner. We saw Kane before the girls' game getting up a lot of shots. He should be already warmed he up. He's putting on some moves out there. I think he was using the James Harden step back a couple times. Three-pointer on the way from Palmer wouldn't go. And you know, these Vikings uh, last year as sophomores, they were, I think, okay, look, Brigman played on the varsity, but the yeah. other four were on the junior varsity team that uh, we look over to our left at 25-0, and 0, went undefeated last year. Yeah, Riley Bouchard with the basketball. Younger brother of Alex, his three-pointer was too strong. Bragdon, Bouchard on him. Now Kane. Inman tacks the rim. And a pushing foul will be called on Caribou. It'll be on Zach Medor. Just a bump. So he went, got by. Inman makes them both. Herbert hesitates. Tried to kick it out to Bouchard. It was intercepted by Palmer. Well, that was one where he probably could have laid it in as he got up in the air. Hardy. Running hook shot. Gets the roll. Well, that's a tough shot. Caleb Espling right in his face. Had to hand up. Herbert, lob pass for Brigman, and he'll lay it up and in. Good finish by Brigman, his defender. His Inman coming at him. Underneath, Hardy has it blocked away by Espling. Now Bouchard to Brigman. Out to Herbert. He'll launch it from deep and bury it. Nice find. Bregman used the cross-court pass. Corey Herbert. Love it. Kids step into their shot. Knock it down in rhythm. The footwork is so critical. Palmer answers it on the other end. Had his under him, too. Head coach Kyle Corgan will take a 30-second timeout to get a few more subs into the game. As well, Ellsworth will get number 14, Brody Mercer and at number 34, Dean Rich. On the other side for Caribou, number 34, Brevin Barnes, number 50, Joey Gregson, and number 52, Carter Quist 
We'll all check in. Nice to see Brevin get out there. There's a lot of people who haven't followed WHOU for uh, well over the years. Brevin, when he was in middle school, and four years ago, he's in seventh grade, yes, and uh, he and his father followed us all over Rooster they, County. They did. So Brevin used to do some point, do some stats for us. We'd give him the microphone at the end of the game. Yeah. We had a hard time getting him to uh, <laughs> take over the microphone, but he did uh, yeah. the end of his career. He's he's ditched us, though, now yeah, for his buddies well, during well, the games. Yeah, now he's too cool to hang out with old Stevie <laughs> and Bobby. So. But it's nice to see Brevin get out there. It's, it'll be Medor. Gregson. Gregson, Medor. Pax with the left hand, puts up the tough shot. That's a nice take. Pass. I was just going to say, attack the hoop, and he does, down the left side. Pass intended for Rich is intercepted. Espling out of Quist. Gregson, they swing it to Barnes. Espling drives baseline, goes up strong. That's good ball movement. Sharing is carrying, Stevie. Swing it around a couple times. The junior Espling will have two at the line. So to recap the double headers on WHOU today, over in Presque Isle, MDI boys pick up the win over Presque Isle, and then the Presque Isle girls won it at the buzzer over MDI. Buzzer beater by Libby Morrow. As McDonald checks in for Kane, then the, sure uh, wasn't Maggie Castoni. Well, according to my camera guy, it was Maggie Castoni, but he was as upside down. Per, I think I heard. per usual, incorrect. I don't even think their numbers resemble each other. <laughs> Well, 24 and 22. I will give them that. Espling makes one of two. But the uh, Ellsworth girls pick up the tough win over Caribou. And now here the boys will pick up the win. So both MDI and Ellsworth will get a split. Well, and you can't overstate the uh, defensive performance as a whole from the Caribou Vikings here this afternoon. And Going to make it 23 in a row. Steal here. It's Medor. We'll go all the way to the rim. Can't finish. Ball still loose. Scooped up by Espling. Out of Barnes. Having a hard time not calling him Barnsy. <laughs> he calls dad. Twist. As it looks like Caribou will be content to... Let the clock expire, and that will be your final score. 74 to 42, an impressive victory for the Caribou Vikings. And Well, Ellsworth took the lead 6-4 to four early on, with Darby Berry hit two straight threes, but after the, uh, after the timeout, Caribou simply ran away with well, it. Well, once they got on a roll, you know, more so in that second quarter, they were just on fire. Sawyer Depre knocked down some threes. Isaac Marker did. Alex Bushard did. We mentioned Parker Depre kind of carried the scoring load in the first quarter. The weapons they possess, just too hard to stop one or key on one in particular. And, you know, we talk about this being one of those games that everybody had kind of circled on their calendar. I, I, I see this as kind of a statement win for Caribou, saying this is a team in Ellsworth that, you know, is supposed to be vying for the Northern Maine title, and we just beat them by 32 points. So... You're going to have to come through us. Right. So some final numbers for you for the Ellsworth Eagles, who dropped to 4-2. and two. They were led by Darby Berry and Jackson Curtis with nine points apiece. Austin Harris had eight. Hunter Curtis with five. Adam Inman with two. Andrew Wrightout with four. Michael Palmer with three. And Colby Hardy with two. On the other side for the Vikings, who extend their... Well, over two seasons, win streak to 23 games. They're 7 0 on the year. They were led by Parker Depre with 23. Sawyer Depre had 19. Isaac Marker with 14. Alex Bouchard with 9. Corey Herbert and Zach Medor with 3. Michael Brigman with 2. And Ethan Holdsworth and Caleb Espling with 1 apiece. So the Vikings, yeah, you say it's a statement win, but again, the balance offensively. 
uh, where they're able to come at you with multiple people. Uh, Kerber right now riding into their uh, tough matchup. I say it doesn't get much easier as they're going to take on Washington Academy on Saturday. But right now, Uncle Mo is on their side. Well, it certainly is. We watched them play Saturday here against MDI, and it was an impressive win. But this is this was even more so yeah. impressive in in you know just the way they did it defensively. The, the defensive intensity was so much higher today than it was Saturday. And they they uh, just again you mentioned the balance. It's tough to stop or key on one player like like they did with Jackson Curtis. Yep. A lot of things run through him. They shut him down, and and nobody else was able to pick up the scoring load and consequently for Ellsworth just unable to get it going here today yeah for Ellsworth uh, tough loss they dropped a forward too but you know we do expect to see they still got to play one more time down in Ellsworth and now this was different a different environment sort of a measuring stick for them I say to take on the leading team in class B now they kind of have an idea of what they need to work on and where they need to be to contend for a championship well they certainly do and you know that'll be a different environment down there in Ellsworth it's those overnight trips I believe they'll be playing first. Caribou will play Ellsworth first when they travel down there. But uh, it, it's a road game now, and Ellsworth's going to want some redemption after uh, what transpired here today. I fully expect them to compete come February as well. To recap, both games, the Ellsworth girls pick up the win 41-37, and then the Caribou Viking boys pick up the win 74 to 42. That'll do it for our New Year's broadcast. Our next one will be on Saturday. It'll be another doubleheader here in Caribou as Washington Academy will take on the Vikings. For everybody involved on today's broadcast, Chelsea Gentle, our producer, John Humphrey, behind the camera, my broadcast partner, Bobby Russell. I'm Steve Carmichael. Have a good night, everybody.